understanding revictimization beyond the initial trauma. Sexual assault is a devastating experience. It leaves deep wounds that can impact every aspect of a survivor's life. But the trauma doesn't always end there. Survivors often face a second wave of harm known as revictimization. This occurs when they are blamed, disbelieved, or shamed for the assault. Revictimization is not a single event. It is an insidious cycle of pain that can continue long after the initial trauma. It thrives in silence and thrives on the fear of speaking out. Understanding revictimization is the first step in breaking its hold on survivors. Imagine a world where disclosing your deepest pain only leads to further suffering. This is the reality for many survivors who experience revictimization. It is a betrayal that cuts deep, amplifying the original trauma and hindering the healing process. We must acknowledge the profound damage caused by revictimization. It is not simply a matter of toughening up or moving on. It requires us to confront uncomfortable truths about how we treat survivors and the systems that fail to protect them. Revictimization takes on many forms, each one chipping away at a survivor's sense of self and safety. One of the most common is victim blaming. This happens when survivors are held responsible for the assault often through subtle questions or accusations. Disbelief is another painful form of revictimization. Survivors may hear, are you sure that's what happened? Or why didn't you fight back? These doubts undermine their experiences and make it harder to seek help. Social stigma also plays a significant role in revictimization. Survivors may feel ashamed or afraid to speak out fearing judgment from their communities or even their own families. This silence only serves to protect perpetrators and perpetuate the cycle of abuse. Finally, institutional failures contribute to revictimization. This can include inadequate responses from law enforcement, insensitive medical examinations, or a lack of support services. When systems meant to protect survivors fail, it reinforces their feelings of powerlessness and isolation. It's like you're already struggling with what happened and then you have to face all this doubt and blame. It's exhausting and makes you feel so alone. The consequences of revictimization are far reaching and devastating. Survivors may experience a range of emotional and psychological effects. These include increased anxiety, depression, post-traumatic stress disorder, and even suicidal thoughts. Revictimization can also damage a survivor's self-worth. When their experiences are minimized or dismissed, it reinforces feelings of shame, guilt, and self-blame. This can lead to difficulty forming healthy relationships and trusting others. Physically, revictimization can manifest as chronic pain, sleep disturbances, and weakened immune systems. The constant stress of carrying the burden of trauma, compounded by the lack of support, takes a toll on the body's ability to heal. Furthermore, revictimization can prevent survivors from seeking help. The fear of being judged or disbelieved can be paralyzing, leading them to suffer in silence. This isolation only deepens the wounds of trauma and makes recovery even more challenging. When survivors face revictimization, it compounds their trauma, making the path to healing that much more difficult. They need and deserve a supportive environment to truly begin their recovery. In the face of revictimization, finding your voice is a radical act of resistance. Storytelling can be a powerful tool in the healing process, allowing survivors to reclaim their narratives and challenge the silence that protects abusers. 
Sharing your story is not about seeking pity or revenge. It's about breaking free from the shame and isolation that revictimization breeds. It's about connecting with others who understand and offering hope to those who are still suffering in silence. When survivors share their stories, they create a ripple effect of empathy and understanding. They challenge the myths and stereotypes surrounding sexual assault and create space for other survivors to come forward. Finding your voice takes immense courage. It's a process that should never be rushed or forced. But when survivors are ready to share their stories, they deserve to be met with compassion, validation, and unwavering support. Telling my story was one of the hardest things I've ever done, but it was also incredibly freeing. It helped me take back control and know that I wasn't alone. Breaking the cycle of revictimization requires a collective effort. We must create communities where survivors feel safe, believed, and supported. This starts with fostering a culture of consent and respect where sexual violence is never tolerated. Education is paramount. We need to teach young people about healthy relationships, consent, and bystander intervention. By equipping them with knowledge and skills, we can empower them to challenge harmful attitudes and behaviors. Creating safe spaces for survivors to come forward is crucial. This includes providing access to confidential support services, such as hotlines, counseling centers, and support groups. Institutions must also be held accountable for their role in re-victimization. Law enforcement, medical professionals, and the justice system need to be trained to respond to sexual assault with sensitivity and respect. Section 6. Practical Steps for Family and Friends. Showing up with love. Supporting a loved one who has experienced sexual assault and revictimization can feel overwhelming. But even small acts of kindness can make a world of difference. Here are some practical ways to show up with love. Believe them. This is the most important thing you can do. Let your loved one know that you believe their story without question or judgment. Your unwavering support can be a lifeline in their darkest moments. Listen without interrupting. Create a safe space for them to share their experiences at their own pace. Avoid offering unsolicited advice or trying to fix the situation. Simply listening with an open heart can be incredibly healing. Validate their feelings. Acknowledge that their feelings of anger, sadness, fear, and guilt are all valid responses to trauma. Let them know that it's okay to not be okay. Offer practical support. Ask how you can help with everyday tasks like cooking, cleaning, or childcare. Sometimes the most helpful thing you can do is ease the burden of daily responsibilities. Section 7. Advocacy and Action. Challenging Systemic Failures. Creating lasting change requires more than individual acts of kindness. We must challenge the systemic failures that perpetuate revictimization. This means advocating for policy changes that protect survivors and hold perpetrators accountable. We must demand better from our justice system. This includes ensuring that sexual assault cases are investigated thoroughly and prosecuted fairly. Survivors deserve access to legal representation and support throughout the legal process. We must also address the root causes of sexual violence, such as gender inequality, toxic masculinity, and rape culture. This requires challenging harmful stereotypes, promoting healthy relationships, and creating a culture of consent. Our voices matter. 
By speaking out against injustice, supporting organizations that fight for survivors' rights, and voting for candidates who prioritize these issues, we can create a world where re-victimization is no longer tolerated. Section 8. Breaking Free. Moving Towards a Future Without Revictimization. Breaking the cycle of revictimization is a long and arduous journey. It requires immense courage, resilience, and support. But healing is possible. Survivors can reclaim their power, find their voices, and create a future free from shame and silence. Recovery is not linear. There will be setbacks, triggers, and moments of despair. But with each step forward, survivors chip away at the walls of trauma and build a foundation of strength and resilience. Seeking professional help is crucial. Therapists who specialize in trauma can provide survivors with the tools and support they need to navigate the complex emotions associated with revictimization. Remember, healing is not about forgetting or minimizing the trauma. It's about integrating the experience into your life story and finding meaning and purpose on the other side of pain. Section 9. A Call to Courage. Building a world that believes and supports. The fight against revictimization is a call to action for all of us. It's a call to listen with open hearts, believe without hesitation, and speak out against injustice. It's a call to create communities where vulnerability is met with compassion, where shame is replaced with empathy, and where silence is broken by a chorus of support. Let us be the generation that ends the cycle of re-victimization. Let us build a world where survivors are not only heard, but truly believed, supported, and empowered to heal. This is our shared responsibility. This is our chance to create a brighter future for all.